Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Sports Exchange, Sports Exchange here on the South Florida Tribune Broadcasting Network. In studio, I have Louis Adio Weiss, and leading off, and You're Louis Adio Weiss, Louis Adio Weiss, right? I know, but you, it's funny. Just ha- get, starting off on a comedic note, I think you referred to yourself as me, so I guess I'll be Scott Morgan Roth for the All right, night. Well, <laughs> whatever you say. Well, here we are, no matter what order we are. All right, Louis is across. Uh, from myself, and that's all we need to know. Leading off is Ryan Skorud, who is our fantasy football insider, expert, whatever you want to call him. And Ryan, welcome back. And by the way, uh, why don't you lead off with your milestone that you had yesterday for the uh, national audience? Well, last last night, uh, last night I recorded my 250th episode for the Skull King Fantasy Football Podcast for my website, so... That was a, a lot of fun doing that, and it's it's uh, it's been uh, it's been quite a journey over the last. Well, we've been doing this for about uh, three and a half years in terms of the podcast, so it's been it's been a lot of fun. Very good. Well, you know what? Let's get back to it. So, I have a question before we lead into some years. Okay, obviously, right. Mari Cooper's situation is up in the air, and what I decided to do here, I needed some insurance, and I decided to get some with Michael Gallup. Uh, I think he's a valuable uh, pickup for me. And it's not like the pickings are slim with wide receivers if Cooper is out and you need somebody on that same team to put in since all the other games are complete. What are your thoughts about me picking up Michael Gallup, number one? And I'll tell you what, I'm before you answer that question, I uh, took a page out of what your advice was before when I had Chase Edmonds in place of Larry Johnson until Larry was cleared to go. And then last year, when Le'Veon Bell decided... Not to show up, I grabbed James Conner. So there's a little history when it comes to some of these backups. So comment on Michael Gallup. Uh, Michael Gallup's a little bit of a mystery, and here's why. He's he's kind of been like a, like Tyler Boyd in the fact that Tyler Boyd has always had his best games when A.J. Green is there to take the primary coverage. Um, that's sort of what Michael Gallup has been... Um, in the, in the game or two that, that Amari Cooper has missed. And so what, what helps Gallup is the fact that he's going up against the Eagles who have given up uh, more points than any other team, uh, given up more points to the wide receiver position than any other defense. Um, so it's, it's a good matchup. We'll see how it works out. I think that Gallup could have an okay game. We'll, I think that they're, there are possibly some other some other positions or some other uh, players that that could fare a little bit better, but it's it's not it's not it's not the worst worst uh, worst pickup at all. Well, considering the circumstances being what they are, my gut feeling is it's not like I'm holding onto this guy all year. He's nothing more than just an insurance policy, like what you said a week ago. Yeah. Chase Edmonds was to Larry Johnson. Uh, I would rather have Cooper in there, but. You know, since the pickings are slim on a Sunday night game, you more or less have to go ahead and do that. Lewis has a question. Well, no, not a question, but actually a note here I'm just reading uh, that Amari Cooper, despite the hamstring injury, plans on playing Sunday. So, oh. I, you know, and I agree with you, Scott. It would be smart to start Gallup over Cooper, considering that, you know, the hamstring's probably going to limit how off, how many targets he's going to get from Prescott. But, you know, Gallup actually already has two games this year of 100-plus yards. So you may work out there, and he has a little bit of history against the Eagles you know, last time they played last year, he only had three catches, but he had 29 yards. You know, not a terrible game, not a great game by any stretch of the means, but expect him to be incorporated in the offense a little bit more. So, you know, on your end, just a comment, being smart for you. Okay. Starting well, him over Cooper. Good to know. All right, well, that's why I added him, so we'll see how it plays out that day. I'll have more. You know, right now, thankfully, it's only Thursday, even though I'm not worried about I don't have any players in tonight's game anyhow, so it doesn't really matter. But that said, okay, Ryan, you were talking about best streaming options at quarterback for week seven. Go ahead. Yeah, there's some quarterbacks that um, if you're if you're dealing with injury or you have some bye weeks this week, um, there are some 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 decent quarterbacks that are not uh, as highly owned that uh, that have some pretty good matchups. Uh, starting off with the obvious one is is uh, um, Josh Allen, who's going up against the Dolphins at home uh, in Buffalo. The 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 Dolphins' defense gives up more points than any other team to uh, the quarterback position in terms of fantasy points. And so Alice should have a phenomenal game, not only throwing the ball, but running it himself. 
uh, and this should be a solid game for him. So he is a, he is not a guy that's going to cost you a game by 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 having a, a down game. Um, a couple other options to that you could look at. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo going up against the Redskins. It is in Washington, but uh, the Redskins defense gives up the eighth most amount of fantasy points to the quarterback position. Um, a couple others. Daniel Jones is at home against the Cardinals. That should be a fun one. Uh, those defenses, uh, in terms of the Giants and the Cardinals, both give up the third and fifth most points to the to the quarterback position in fantasy. And so both Jones and Kyler Murray should have really good games going into this one. Um, and then the other, the other, uh, the other one uh, that you know, again for for your neck of the woods, is uh, is um, is Gardner Minshew going up against the Bengals. Uh, it'll be in Can or it'll be in Cincinnati. Uh, but again, the the um, the Cincinnati defense gives up the fourth amount, fourth most amount of points to uh, the quarterback position. So I would get, I would call this a good uh, bounce back opportunity for Minshew after having the tough. Uh, the tough week last week going up against the Saints defense. Okay, let's talk about the stars who you say can struggle in week seven. All right, so here's the ones that we'll start it off with the game tonight, and unfortunately, you know, if, if this isn't going live until afterwards, it, you know, it'll be a little late on this, but if you drafted Patrick Mahomes, you're not going to sit him. Um, however, I would not expect him to be as um, – as Patrick Mahomes and as we, as we are used to seeing. Um, in the first three weeks, he was averaging, like, what was it, 29 points a game. Since then, in weeks uh, four through six, he's only averaged, I want to say, about 18 and a half to 19 points per game. Um, as and, and he's dealing with this angle, in, uh, this ankle injury that I saw a report, I believe it was on, um, I want to say on Pro Football Focus or something, that um, he... This ankle injury is most likely worse than everyone's describing it. He has not shown the mobility that he has had, um, you know, all through last year, even in the first couple of weeks. After re- basically, he he aggravated, injured it, his ankle in week one against the Jaguars, and then basically re-aggravated it in the game. Was it the the game at night against the Colts? And it's obviously just has not been as mobile the last couple of weeks. So. I think that he could struggle there. The, the Broncos give up the third fewest amount of points to um, the quarterback position. They're playing in Denver. And also, the, the Broncos defense gives up the fewest amount of fantasy points to wide receivers. So that's going to limit him a little bit, Mahomes a little bit, in terms of um, Tyreek Hill, who, who is still so explosive, he could still get loose and have a decent game. But I think that, that the, the rest of the Broncos uh, secondary – is good enough to hold down Nicole Hardman and Demarcus Robinson since Sammy Watkins is out tonight. Right. Uh, and Travis Kelsey uh, has a bit of a tough sledding because the linebackers are holding, are holding, uh, or the Denver linebackers are holding tight ends to, you know, less, what's that, I want to say the ninth fewest amount of fantasy points. So this, this Denver defense has really been somewhat unheralded in terms of what they're, what they've been able to do. Um, in terms of allowing other teams scoring, even though they're what four, two and four right now. Right. Um, this is this is not going to be an easy game for the Chiefs, and I would be surprised if, in the end, the Chiefs end up losing this game to the Broncos. Really interesting. Okay. All right. You got a few other players you want to mention? Yeah, a couple others. Uh, DJ Chark may have a little bit of tough sledding. It could be a better a better game for um, for DD Westbrook. Uh, the the Bengals. You know, despite their defensive um, deficiencies to quarterbacks and running backs, um, they do have the fourth, uh, give up the fourth fewest amount of points to wide receivers. And so, if, if you know, I want to say that Drake or Patrick, if he is still in, I've heard that he's dealing with a little bit of an injury, but if he is still in, he's kind of their top corner. He could do an okay job at holding down DJ Chark. It could be more that Minshew. You know, it's dumping off passes to Fournette. They rely on the run game, and uh, and maybe you know it's hitting secondary receivers like Westbrook and such. So um, it, I'm not saying that you know that Chark is going to get uh, get shut out, but the the uh, Cincinnati defense does well enough that they could hold him down a little bit. Terry McLaurin is going up against an absolutely brutal defense in the 49ers, um, giving up the the 24th. Uh, fewest amount of fantasy points to wide receivers. That's a, that's going to be a tough matchup. And really, 
the the um, the 49ers actually rank in the top 10 in terms of least amount of fantasy points given up to quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, and to tight ends. So they are just a, they have been a suffocating defense. The only, really the only defense all around that has been better than them is the New New England Patriots. Um, and the other ones that. Uh, Darren Waller is going to have a little bit of a tough sledding against the Packers, who are really tough against tight ends. Um, Keenan Allen, I think the struggle continues a little bit for um, Keenan Allen and the and the Chargers offense going up against the uh, the Titans in Tennessee, who against against uh, quarterbacks, running backs, and wide receivers are all in the top ten in terms of fewest amount of points given up. Uh, fantasy points giving up to those positions so uh, those are just some guys that you know you're not necessarily gonna I mean guys like Mahomes Keenan Allen those are guys you're not necessarily gonna sit but you know just I'd be I'd be cautious about how much to expect out of them going into these uh, these games this week well you also had some on carry on what's going on with carry on well, carry on Johnson again. This is another one where it's going to be a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a tough matchup. The Vikings um, are another one of those. They're they're very good against quarterbacks um, overall, you know, especially in dealing with getting sacks, um, causing fumbles to quarterbacks. Uh, they also give up the sixth fewest amount of points to fantasy points to the running back position, and so. Um, Knowing that, I think that it could force them, especially with how explosive the Vikings' uh, offense has been the last few weeks, um, or the last couple weeks at least, um, I could see the, the the Lions needing to throw the ball a little bit more in order to in order to keep up. Um, and and the Vikings are somewhat vulnerable in terms of their defensive secondary giving up points to uh, wide receivers and tight ends. But uh, their front seven has been uh, extremely stingy uh, against against the run so far this year. So, carry on Johnson again. You're probably going to start him unless your unless your team is absolutely stacked and you have other options. Um, I would be I would be hesitant to just automatically start carry on Johnson this week. All right, I have a question for you. I know yes. from what I read today that the Bengals are going to be without their top corners. So with that said, don't you think that DJ Chark could be a better option taking that into consideration? Chark could still be a decent option. Again, um, I think that he could get game scripted out a little bit. Not Again, not necessarily because of because of the, the, the Bengals' defense stopping the pass, but they're one of the worst teams in terms of stopping the run. And I think that, um, I think that they could – the the uh, the Jaguars could do a lot with just letting Fournette run all over right. that defense. So well, that's a good point. I was just curious because I have Chark and I'm debating whether to keep him in and maybe go in with the running back for Oakland as a potential uh, flex player and then taking Chark out. I don't know. There'll be a little juggling around there. Well, now that we talk about Josh Jacobs, uh, what do you think of him anyhow this week as an option against Green Bay? Uh, I think that Jacobs is solid. Again, the the, the Packers defense um, has done a good job, um, you know, really getting to quarterbacks this year, uh, and and really stopping up uh, stopping up the, uh, the the tight ends in terms of receiving. Uh, however, they give up a lot of points, especially short yardage to um, to running backs. Uh, they've actually given up the fourth most amount of points to. The running back fantasy points to the running back position this year so they have struggled a little bit especially in short yardage position so if they're getting you know um you know if they get down into the red zone i could see you know josh jacobs punching in at least one if not two if not two touchdowns um this week against the against that uh that packers defense okay and finally you talk about your sleeper picks go ahead talk about them all right, so uh, number the number one that I have on here is is the wide receiver from um, from the Packers, Lazard. Who uh, really at this point it could come down to Jake Kumro and Lazard as the top two wide receivers for the Packers this week. Um, you've got Devontae Adams who's still suffering with turf toe. Don't know if he'll be back this week. He'll most likely most likely it's looking like it's going to be next week. You have uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling and um, Geronimo Allison, 